And good evening. You're watching the arena. I'm Alex Pearson turning the tables on Michael Corrin. Indeed, I'm taking over today because Sun News Network is now three years old. You may recall the arena. Well, we it wasn't quite there on day one. It was born on August 31st, 2011. Michael, how do you like having the tables turned on you? I absolutely hate it. I'm terrified. <laughs> I feel vulnerable, fragile. It's really strange. Well, we did have a show for a little bit together. Remember, we, we yeah, co-hosted together. I, I was still at the uh, at the old place at CTS, mm -hmm. and and Sun were asking me to come over. I was a bit reluctant, frankly, because uh, I had a, a, a permanent TV show there, and I wasn't sure about Sun's long-term future. And they very kindly said, well, come over and co-host with Alex for one idea. And then eventually I, I made the leap. Yeah, used to be great for you. You always terrify me. Though. You <laughs> always on. terrify well, me. I was in news at that time. Yeah. So I wasn't doing the more editorial stance. And I remember sitting beside you and my mother would email me and say, he's so smart. <laughs> and I remember saying, my God, what is going to come out of his mouth next? And I'd, I think you said that to me once. Yeah. <laughs> I think the bubbles would appear above my head and say, did he actually just say that? He did. But nonetheless, you came into the primetime lineup. And three years later, we're still here, mm. still poking the bear, and still creating conversation. Do you remember what the first show you did was about? I've, oh, we had, so, who do we have on? We had, uh, Pat Buchanan was on, perhaps? Was Mark Stein on? Your monologue, let me remind yeah. you. Can we remind Michael what Please. his first show was about? Yeah. Good evening and welcome. You have just entered the arena. I'm Michael Corrin, and thank you for joining me. I'm offended, therefore I am. The rallying cry of the censorship obsessed throughout the world. Uh, they come in all sorts of shapes and sizes, but at this point in history, the campaign to silence you, me, all of us, is led by a disparate and at first glance unnatural coalition. Muslims, gays, feminist zealots, socialist radicals, strange bedfellows, especially if the gays and the Muslims are in the same bed. Do you remember that? I do. And the suit, and it was sort of up at the back. <laughs> I remember not that. allowed to wear those anymore. Well, look, you came to this Can't network. Can't wear the loud British chalk stripe any longer. No. That was a diktat from above. So maybe that <laughs> has changed, but your opinions have not changed. You came to this network for a very specific reason. A little. They, they, in some areas, they have changed, and I'm, I'm actually quite criticized for it, but I, I wear that proudly. I think on the gay issue, mm -hmm. I've realized that my, I was never a hater. I mean, God is my witness, I never hated anyone. But I think my language was too harsh and I closed the door. Um, it's not that my views have changed radically on the issue, it's that my views about discussing the issue have changed radically. I just work with and know too many gay people. And also, um, if I, I may, my faith has evolved. And I think to really lead a, a, a Christian life, you've got to evince more love and empathy. You get a lot of blowback, though, from hardcore Christians. There are a lot of people that you offend and, and they <laughs> come out swinging at you. What do you say to them? Um, because I read the comments online and I think, gee, are we not allowed to evolve? It's a good point because just lately, as someone who stood up as a social conservative for, for what, 20 years now, because I refuse to be sufficiently angry, apparently, about gay people, mm -hmm. because I say that the, the anti-gay laws in Africa are, are repugnant and should be opposed, there are people out there who, who think I've sold out. I haven't sold out at all. I, I, I believe that there's no point in just shouting at each other. We had earlier in the week um, Bill Watcott and Peter LaBarbera. They were arrested in Saskatchewan, and I, and I had Peter on the show. I oppose them. I think they're, they're offensive, rude, grotesque, mm -hmm. unhelpful, but I defend their right to speak, for goodness sake. But I don't believe we're achieving anything right now within the Christian world with the gay community, and I'm trying to be more open. I'm not progressive, but empathetic is the word I would emphasize. Do you feel like you have a moral obligation uh, to be responsible in the way you, you put out your opinions on the issue? That's a very good question. Uh, I do, and I think that's become more evident to me in, in, in recent times. Uh, I don't know about you, but sometimes I sit here and I don't realize, you know, solipsism, I don't realize the effect I'm having on people. There are mm -hmm. people who come up to me, I've had, you have this as well, they come yep. up and they say, you, I, I like you so much, what you said two years ago, what you, and you know, I, I have to be responsible. Now, when it comes to issue, the life issue, when it comes to issues of, of, of believing in God, there's no compromise at all. I'm not even compromising on sexual morality. All I'm saying is, look, can, can you say, can you look at a, a gay friend and say, you have to be lonely for the rest of your life. Forget the sex. You have to be lonely for the rest of your life. What would you say to one of your children who said to you, I'm gay? No, it hasn't happened with me. But would I just say, well, that's a disorder. I mean, that's sinful. No, I would hold them and love them. It's very nuanced and complex, and I'm not prepared to play the game of black, white, blanket sure. statement. Well, I think most would think that's a healthy approach to so. take. 
What are some of your most memorable moments? Because if you don't remember them, we will certainly show you. <laughs> well, I know some of them that you've found. Um, interesting. I think that the, the moments that may have been the most successful are those that, I, that didn't seem particularly uh, memorable at, at, at the time. Uh, but certainly, I know you have this uh, Shmuley Botiak thing. And that, that, that was interesting because it was such a shock. This is a guy who, with all due respect, I hadn't really even taken very seriously. He was a showman. I don't think a lot of people in the Jewish faith do take him seriously, well, but he's that, huge business in the United States. Well, for, he, he is. That's interesting, because I found out, out later, so many people, particularly in the Orthodox community, sure. said to me, Michael, do not listen to this man. But we had him on as really as filler, and it just sort of took a, a different turning. And then he, was he knew nothing about me. He was accusing me of anti-Semitism. Yes. And he said he didn't, but he sort of implied it. And, he, and, he, and so he went to various media outlets, not knowing the friends I have. So he went to uh, 1010, for example, CFRB, to Jim Richards. And, and Jim says, Mike, come on first, because this guy's saying awful things. He didn't realize I had three, three Jewish grandparents. He didn't realize I'd won awards in the Jewish community. So we had the JDL, the Jewish Defense League, B'nai B'rith, and all the rest of them saying, we demand to come on the show to defend you. This man is outrageous. It was, well, it was great, great fun. Let's see how outrageous you are or were. <laughs> You said that the Jewish depiction of, of Christians, Jewish because the Jews, you said, control Hollywood. No, I didn't say that at all. Okay, so let's go back. Yeah. You said that the Jews, I think the Jews have a, that have an opinion still of within the Jewish community, there is a view that somehow Christians are southern, bigoted. If you scratch them, there's anti Semitism there. And I would stand by that. I but think then that's you a general said view. That, then when I asked you to justify that, you said that's how they're depicted by Hollywood. And I, I, and I A think, equals B and B equals C equals and C. And I think Hollywood, the I Jews, think Hollywood invariably does that and far worse. What does so that, that do with the Jews? Oh, I think Jewish people are very influential in Hollywood, and I think I think it's so childish you, to say otherwise. So you think that but you, you, but you depict that as anti-Semitism? So you think whereas that, I think that's a great tribute to Jewish people that they depict Christians as a bunch of no, that they're influential. No, that they're influential in Hollywood. I don't think that's anti-Semitic. I think that's a great achievement. You're saying that the Jews misportray Christians, and it's simply not true. Well, it's simply I, not true. Let's not turn the tables here. My personal Jews experience been, has been that is overwhelming in the case, Rabbi. And when you say negative depictions of Pope Pius during the war, mm. Pope Pius XII was one of the most wicked men of the 20th century. You know, you are talking about you a man. Know, who, sir, you are talking about You know, sir. We're out of time. Man. I wish we weren't. You, with all due respect, you know nothing about that situation. I know. Your, your history I will is of the day, past. Anytime. Read Rabbi Dallin's The Myth of Hitler. Hitler's Pope, read Sir Martin read Gilbert, the, the great, Hitler's Pope. it's a flawed book, read Sir Martin Gilbert, the By greatest the 12th, historian of the Holocaust in English language and a Jewish man. Doesn't mean, doesn't mean you're We're out of right. time. We're out of time. Rabbi Shmuley. I don't think Rabbi Shmuley has ever been challenged like that. Mm -hmm. And he certainly forgot that it was your show. He's a curious figure. Um, he, he, was, <laughs> <laughs> he was on my old show once where he spoke with all due respect about oral sex. That was the issue that was being discussed, or he wanted to discuss at that time which, again, was a bit of a surprise from a rabbi, but that's entirely up to him. I'm not, I'm not saying he was taking one position or the other, as it were, uh, but um, th this subject suddenly came up. It, it, was, it was showmanship. It, it, was, uh, it was very facile. And, and what he did there, he, he must have been in a bad mood, because what I was saying was, I was echoing the words of people like Spielberg and Dershowitz, mm -hmm. that Jewish people are influential in Hollywood. It's absurd to say otherwise. And I thought that, that, that liberals, in particular in Hollywood, were, were portraying Christian people in a, in a very negative light. What I've said before is I said, thank God there is post-Holocaust theology. Christians are readdressing the way they, they understand Jewish people. I'm not sure if it's always been reciprocated. And I'm in a, not a unique, but a special position as a Catholic with three Jewish grandparents. But he just, he went absolutely crazy and then started to write all over the place. But again, when you go to Huffington Post Canada and you go to CFRB and other places, they know me and they're friends. And it, what, was, what was actually quite moving was the number of Jewish people all over North America who said to me, Mike, we know this guy and we know you. Please know we're on your side. Well, you certainly speak for a number of different sides. And we're glad you do. You give a voice, like many of our people in prime time. And there's no one else like you doing it. <laughs> well, Congratulations thank on three you. years. You're a love. Thank you.